All right, folks, today I'd like to shed some light on a characteristic feature of historical European martial arts, the thumb grip. I recorded a demonstration with Eric Bailey, the head instructor of the local HEMA school, Blood and Iron, but it seems the gods of audio have cursed me. Both of us had an audio recorder on us with a lavalier microphone to compensate for the poor acoustics in that room, and both of them randomly and inexplicably shut down after a couple of minutes. I'm still going to use some of that footage, but the audio quality is kind of appalling, unfortunately. Anyway, so the thumb grip is something that you see pop up over and over again in the medieval and renaissance manuals, associated mainly with the German tradition. It's used with longsword, messer, arming sword, quite common, really. And um, there are really two main types of cuts. Of course, there are a variety of different angles but you can classify them into two different cutting mechanics, if you will. I'm gonna let Eric explain that. So there are two basic types of rotation you can throw, uh, especially with a two-handed sword, but it applies to other swords as well. The first type that we can talk about is a conical rotation, where, for example, I have an ox, I roll up to my cutting position, and I cut into my target or opponent. So from here, that's making a conical rotation. The other type, which uses the thumb grip, is a flat plane rotation, where you can see the sword is traveling more or less on a flat plane. It doesn't twist in the hands at all in those types of cuts. So the important thing here is not so much that the thumb is there, it's the orientation of the grip. If I were to throw a regular undercut from my left side, I grip it the way you would expect, and then I cut like so. The, the angle can vary. It can either be a relatively steep one or it can approach a horizontal cut. With the thumb grip, on the other hand, I'm not holding it like this, but I'm rotating it. So the flat is forward and the cut happens at basically the same angle, but it is a different mechanic. And this allows you to throw cuts that otherwise would be really awkward or inefficient. For example, you can, with this grip, you can actually throw an almost, well, you can make it a horizontal cut to the head. And in order to maintain good edge alignment with a standard grip, you would have to essentially start here and have kind of an odd wrist position. A cut must travel in a straight line. If I'm throwing a cut and I twist it in the middle of the cut, my sword is going to stick in whatever I'm cutting, whether it's a tenant, a tenant mat, my opponent, whatever. It must travel in a straight line. So, as work, moving on that single flat plane. Whereas, to get a horizontal undercut, I have to start it here to move straight. And it just doesn't work. To show you another angle, if I wanted to throw a rising cut to the opponent's head from right wrath guard at the same angle that my sword currently is at, this would require me to twist my wrists strangely and it would change the edge alignment quite a bit. You see, if you look at how the edge is, this is twisting as I throw the cut. Whereas if I switch it, now you can see the edge is actually aligned with the direction of the cut that I'm going for. So now there is no twisting. It's right here. So it's more direct and biomechanically efficient, which becomes quite important, not only for cutting, but also for defeating the opponent's guard. And that's true, let's work like this. You blow right through, either the head directly or thrust. If I try to do this with a and it. It's not working. I'm not threatened at all. This is, you see that the point is all the way over here. It, it doesn't actually follow through. There's plenty of complexity to these techniques and they can be used in a variety of ways in many different situations. I'm just gonna give you some more examples. So let's say I'm very close to the opponent and I wanna cut at them, but you know, I'm just too close. So the effective part of the blade to cut with is the upper third. If I strike with the center of the blade, 
the way it is here, it's not going to be anywhere near as good. What can I do about that? Well, if I throw a Zwerk How instead, now I can suddenly strike with this part of the blade. That's because the sword travels in a different plane. So I can bring it very close to the body and now I can throw it out with my left hand and the hilt goes all the way over here and I can now strike with this part of the blade, which otherwise I wouldn't be able to do with this sort of alignment. And I can do this in a variety of angles. I can come around here and you can see again it moves all the way over here. I can cut like so or I can come around here for a shield how and cut that way. So my arms are still extended actually even though I'm striking this much further up the blade. To do that with the other grip I, I just can't. If I want to keep my arms extended the center of the blade is going to hit. So I'd have to pull it in like this, which makes it far worse. If you doubt that that makes a difference, feel free to try it for yourself. Set up a tatami mat and strike at it with T-Rex arms. See how far you can get. In stick fighting, this wouldn't be necessary because you don't have an edge. So you can strike with any part of the stick. It's round after all. So you can easily strike like this. And I've seen that done in stick fighting. But because you have to align the edge you know, in order to strike like this. You don't want to do it with the flat, of course. So this is why you turn it and strike like that. The different ways in which the sword hilt and the arms move and are oriented may seem trivial, but it does make quite a bit of a difference. So one of the things that we were talking about earlier is the shield. Um, and you probably are going to ask us what it's used for, so we're just going to get ahead of the curve and tell you now. Uh, Skala is sitting in the cloud here. It's a fairly threatening position. His point is in my face. I'm not really happy with that. So if I just throw a downward attack at him, I'm walking onto his point. I'm not going to have a good day. Neither of us will. Yeah. However, if I throw a shield, bring my point into the line, suddenly I'm protected and he is, well, skewer grim. So just to make it very clear that thumb grip doesn't magically improve your cuts. It's just a particular tool. It's a different type of cut to be used in certain circumstances. And sometimes the difference can be fairly subtle. For example, if I throw an undercut and now I want to come back for a downward cut, like this, I would have to rotate in this way. By the way, that's, that's a way of making the cut a lot more efficient and saving time. If I were to swing it all the way around my head, this would take way longer than just rotating it in the hand and then coming back down. It's probably more obvious with a false edge cut. So let's say I've, I've thrown you know, the same, same angle basically, just with a thumb grip. And now here it comes. So I don't need to change the orientation or anything. This is already, the, the edge is already aligned in exactly the position that I want. I just need to you know, cut with the other edge. This of course doesn't work with a single edged sword unless you've got a sharpened false edge. And if I were to throw a cut like this and then I want to come back down, this is, I mean, sure, it would still be a strike with the spine that can still do some damage, but it's not going to be a cut. So in this case, I would have to cut like that. All right, one final example, the crimp how or a crooked strike. In this case, it really matters how the blade is oriented. Since they're in a long point, yeah. normally the crimp would be something like this and then follow up with whatever. So as you saw, the crimp how basically comes in like this. The angle can vary depending on the interpretation. I've seen some who do it, use it more in a, a forward manner and uh, others have the blade more you know, with a flat forward, but the same kind of idea. If I wanted to do this without changing grip, this would be really awkward. I would essentially have to do something like that. This, this doesn't even work. Like even if I try to cheat, this still rotates in my other hand at the very least. 
The only way I could possibly do this is maybe from the other side, like this, which is just not efficient. So this works a lot better. The left hand is what powers this. It shoots under the right hand and you can generate quite a lot of power with it. It's usually done with an offline step and then you follow up with whatever technique you want. So yeah, that's pretty much it for right now. I said there's, there's always lots more to talk about, but uh, let's leave it at that for right now. I hope that makes it a little easier to understand why the thumb grip is used and uh, what purpose it has. So I hope you found it informative and thanks for watching. Have a good one, folks. Mm -hmm.